Hi and welcome back to my solo playthrough of Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Currently I'm at 7 out of 130 victory points so it seems I'm not really doing a lot of progress but again from my training sessions I take it that this is pretty normal. I really hope I can do or make some progress throughout this video today. One thing to correct though and thanks Rene for making me aware of this is for every carriage that you successfully rob and we robbed two, you are allowed to move your reputation one point up. So we had now three reputations, so only two more steps away to score more points for our barricades, for our traps and for our envoys. Right now we only have one barricade out on the board yet, but that still could give us six more points at the end of the game. Also a big sorry to you Stacia out there, I think you really wanted to see the cooperative uh, mode of the game, unfortunately I saw your comment a little bit too late, so here I'm not playing the solo rules, but I still hope that's fine with you. Let's start into round two and one thing I forgot to reveal was one of those ransom tiles and wow that's a really good one. So if I will be able to have three captives at the end of the round I could trade those in for 12 victory points which is a huge, huge deal or I could also give away one for two. So ideally I get four guards um, captured this round, really something I have to think about how to do that but I think those three are definitely a must. One of the best ways in order to capture a guard is to build a trap. I have a passive card that allows me to do this, but I think I need some resources first. So yeah, let's play this guy here. So I will send one of my merrymen to the smelter up here. And yeah, this pretty much allows me to grab two ore for that. That's definitely a good start. And now I think I should have enough resources in order to build a trap. I can now use this passive card here to activate it. Um, so I have a choice. I can keep this card where it is until the end of the game. It doesn't score me any immediate point. It's zero, but you know, um, there is this set building element. So if I get more of this guy and put him onto the passive side, then I score some points. Right now, I don't have any of those cards. So I think I might as well move him here to my active pile and this guy now allows me to build a trap. Unfortunately I don't get a discount for that but I think that's still okay. So let's send one of our merrymen here to the building action and I think let's build a trap here at the church. This cost me two iron ore which I just got and one tool. This allows me to grab one of my traps. Unfortunately there's also not benefit for the um, first trap but for now that's fine so let's place this trap here to the church i have to go for the first free spot i could have a merriman there that would have been allowed but i cannot place the trap here onto the hideout where there is already a guard but the next tra uh, guard to go here will be captured anyway and keep in mind each trap i build will score me four points at the end of the game unless i'm not making it higher up this reputation track which is definitely pretty likely that i will make some more progress so the next stage i will also already score five points for that trap i think next i want to build yet another barricade so i will play this shaman here this gives me a discount of any one resource. This doesn't count for money by the way. At least this is what I think. So yeah let's grab one of our guys and I think I want to build another barricade here at the south road. So that's one piece of gold. Um, of course we have to place our guy here. We get a discount so one wood is enough and one iron ore. We can place this money anywhere we like it to be and I think for now let's place this at the north road. I think this is where we lost some money already so I think we should be back at six up there. Again this is one of our losing conditions so we have to take care of this. Of course we are now allowed to grab our next barricade and now we have a bonus at the start of every other round so pretty much the round after this one we will get one coin basically for the remainder of this. I think for three more rounds. I think that's definitely not bad. Let's place the barricade accordingly. Again, this is not something where I'm entirely sure if I should play it this way. Of course, if I now rob a carriage at some point in time later in the game, I will score four points. But right now there aren't any carriages because I already robbed all of those. So there is definitely a risk to that. But for each carriage I rob here, again, I get more points. So let me try it this way. I think the last time I did it uh, differently. So in this case, I really wanted to focus on one road. Next, I definitely need some boost. So let me play 
her to my passive side and this allows me to use any gathering side pretty much so let's grab one of our merrymen and place him here at the center of the church side here this will give me pretty much one piece of wine uh, which i really need later on to free our folk here for example and of course i really start um planning for my end of game scoring first of all that's one victory point and if i get more of her then i could also score a hell of a lot more points at the end of the game as well she has a really powerful effect here so she gives me a discount when building a trap but i think i also should really focus on some end of game scoring there as well Right now I don't have any of um, her other cards on my hand, but this can change. And if I get a new hand next round and I still don't get her, then I might as well use her later on in order to build a cheap trap, for example. For my next action, I'm not so sure, to be honest. Um, I still want to send some folks to King Richard, and I think I don't have too many other meaningful options this round. On the other hand, no, let's wait. Let's wait. Let's send him to the passive side of our um, board here. And yeah, this allows me to take the last merryman I have. And I guess I want to steal from the rich here. I will place him at the center of the gathering side here. So I think that's okay. I get to roll some dice finally. Awesome. Already starting to miss that. I need one success for the first attempt let's see that's good enough and i think hmm i don't have a reroll but i think let's continue to roll and whew, i'm definitely successful i think let's stop here this allows me to grab two of those loot tokens what do we get another coin again that's very very often the case and that's good that's a coin and a bottle of wine i really needed some more distraction tokens awesome okay that's the end of our merriment phase so let's move into the hero phase first thing to do is to draft some weapons i get four so i think take one axe for sure and then i think let's also go for i don't know those daggers I still get one more and I think in this case, poof, does it matter, does it matter? Uh, oof, that's tough. No, let's go for one of those staffs here. Okay, this was my weapon drafting. Next we draw our villain card. So we see a guard appearing at the town center and at the weaponsmith again. Okay, that's good and bad news of some sort. Let's place the guy here first. So he will go in here. Right now there is still one spot left. On the other hand, the weaponsmith is fully maxed out, which means the next guard goes here to our guard track. Right now I'm really not too concerned about this one. I think we can keep this under control. I think next we will see Guy Gisborne, or rather Guy of Gisborne, move to the north road. And he wants to remove a barricade here. And the good thing is I didn't place a barricade there. I was thinking about this for a second, but I didn't. Didn't. So he will simply move in here and he would now remove um, the barricade that's closest to the castle if I'm not mistaken and if then there would be any um, carriage behind that barricade it would start moving of course those natural barricades they can never be removed apart from that he's doing nothing other than blocking the space so any hero who wants to go there still has to spend one bottle of wine first. Then we activate two roads. We start with the east road here, which is up here. So this will move straight to the castle. So it will go in here. This will cost us one penny from the road. I think we are down to five there. So not a problem. We have to respawn a new carriage there. And that's another pink one. And then we have to do the west road too which is pretty much down there so this will move in here next this time we will lose oops two pieces of silver or pennies there so we are down to four so we have to do something about the rest road here of course we will also spawn another carriage and that's a brown one that's bad news because i don't have any bows with me okay that's definitely a problem um hmm have to think about that and that's pretty much it for this card so it's basically to our heroes actions and again we want to capture guards because
because we want that 12 or those 12 victory points for sure. And I think the best way to do that is to send Little John. His special ability allows him to move to the weaponsmith up there in order to grab or trade in weapons um, and this is a free move for him so i think yeah let's take little john to the weapon storage here again that's a free move for him there we can trade in weapons and or for resources and we can do any kinds of stuff still my cap is six weapons so i will spend one piece of wood in order to grab the remaining stuff here and now we will go for our first real move so let's take little john to the iron smelter up here of course he will go in here so there are no villains waiting for us so he's here at the road not here at this location definitely important and i think let's start to take out those guards here and we can use staff and we can also use our daggers so let's zoom out for a bit again we will start with the topmost here and i think let's only use one die for now we need one success perfect that's the success we need so this die is gone but this allowed us to capture this guard this is one third of our goal here already and we can continue now because that's still the free move so let's take our second staff and go after this fellow down there again a success perfect so again we have used this staff but this guard has been captured too i will do the reputation in a second and i think i don't want to take any chances now i want the third guard here so i will roll two of my daggers in order to capture this guy and can you believe it even with two dice I'm not able to capture the final guy. Of course, I can use my distraction token in order to re-roll a die. So let's do that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, that's really bad now. Should I move on or not? Because I still have two weapons with me, actually. And I think, no. Let's not do that. Um, let's not re-roll. So we have to move out of this location. Still, I captured two guards which means I get one, two reputation for that. Though I'm already in the next zone here, which is cool. So I have two barricades and one trap so far. That's 12 points, 17 points right off the bat. Where do I want to send a little John? And I think our best bet would be down here. I will roll two dice again in order to capture this guard and this time whew, was close we are successful so this guard is captured that's our third guard which was really the important piece and because that was the last guard from this location i get the reward here and grab the wrong one um i get a tool pretty much from this location and of course i also get another movement on the reputation track and by the way if i make it all the way up there i will score five more points at the end of the game this was the second movement for our friend here john little or little john down there at the smith so who should go next and actually i was a little bit unfortunate in respect to drawing those heroes here because those two are great but they're kind of redundant to be honest so i think they are really other heroes out there but yeah this is how i chose to play it so i guess let's go with alan adale for now and i think i want to send him here in order to free our prisoner therefore i have to spend one of our distraction tokens and for distraction tokens i get two of those black dice right now our prisoner is here at level one of prison so we only need to roll one success in theory and i cannot re-roll any of those so let's see how well we go oh that was definitely good so i would have been able to do that at the next level but i'm not complaining about this so this guy is freed goes back to my training grounds and i also get a reward because this was a level one prisoner i get one um resource here from the sheriff's stash and to be honest i think let's go for another bottle of wine here we really need those sooner or later too ellen dale still has one more move and i guess as i'm out of weapon dice i will send him here to the archery range so let's roll some dice so first 
attempt. Oh, wow. Can you believe that? He's really not a good shot, it seems. Um, he doesn't, he's not allowed to reroll. That only Robin Hood can do. And I cannot use um, wine bottles for that. So that's pretty much the end of his activation. Pretty lame. At least he was able to free the um, the prisoner from prison and yeah I think that's pretty much the end of the hero phase so let's do the end of round and of course I want to trade in those prisoners for this reward here so that's 12 victory points in total so this actually gets me somewhere so we are now at 19 points now we are talking Guy of Gisburn goes back, all of our folks go back to our hideout and whatever coming from our training grounds. But I think we should be good now. And before I return my heroes, we will stand up the others. So Alan Adale will be sleeping. The same is true for Little John. So I will not be able to use them in my next round. Um, we get to draw up to our six cards. And I think for now I want to hold on to what I have. So I get four more. One, two, three and four. Okay, that's good. She's good. She can really help me to build uh, work on my end of goal, end of game scoring. So that's definitely a good draw. Then let's reveal our next ransom tile. Oh, that's also a great one. Another one that would score us 12 more points. We need more prisoners and those guys are still lying around here and we could also trade in one for wow an awful lot of resources oh that's a great ransom tile to be honest okay let's move into the next round we still haven't lost the game which is kind of good news it's now the start of the round this means we get our start of round bonus right now that's one coin and those coins are also victory points at the end of the game so nothing is lost even the same is true for um guards that are in our hideout we also score us a point so overall everything you do here counts in most cases let's stick to our plan um we will put her to the passive side of our player board unfortunately doesn't give us an immediate point at the end of the game but it helps us score some points uh the maximum we can have here in respect to passive cards is six so if i want something there passive then i have to discard something else before i can moving them um this allows us to place one of our guys anywhere at the gathering site and i need uh, at least one weapon yeah that's the case i will go for a weapon doesn't really matter which weapon because i will spend it in a second next i will move this guy now from the passive to the active side and of course i will use it to send an envoy to king richard i get a discount either of a weapon or a resource in this case i need the weapon so yeah let's grab another of our dudes and send him here to the crusades of king richard so normally i have to pay two weapons two money and any two resources so here are my any two resources so these are two tools one weapon that's the discount from this card and two pennies in this case and again i can put those pennies anywhere i like and i think that we may have a problem down here at the west road so i will definitely place one penny here and maybe i should do it again yeah why not let's place the second penny here as well so i think we should be back at six now and i'm only doing this in order not to lose the game too soon with our envoy now it's important to note we will never get him back at the end of the game so he will stick to king richard and help him in his endeavors down there and yeah he will still score us some points first of all right now every envoy would score us four points of course this can increase and on top of this we can use the envoy to score one of those um, King Richard's task cards. So I think overall we can definitely score easily, I don't know, 10, 12 points with this envoy in total. I was really not lucky in respect to my cards because I didn't get any resource cards. So I think let's do some more robbing the rich. So I will use her special ability here. So I will take one of my merrymen and place him here to this hideout space. And her special ability allows us to re-roll a die. So I think that's definitely not bad. So yeah, let's start. And yeah, we will start with the first stage here. Apparently this was a success, not a problem. Let's do the second stage. 
this was not good enough we will use our reroll now and are you kidding me okay we were not successful so we have to spend a resource now um, because he will go to jail no matter what and if he don't pay the resource then he immediately goes to the second stage of the jail i think this is not what we want to do so i will spend my booze put it in the sheriff's stash and this guy goes right to prison ah that was really bad luck but this makes the decision of what to do next easier so i will place her and send one of my merrymen to the church and of course i will place him to my um trap so he's now protected um from at least from the next guard and because of the special ability i will now get two bottles of wine instead of only one I think with my last merriman I will send this guy or play this guy passively and this allows me to place them anywhere my merriman and I think let's go for another weapon and I think I will go for either of those but it doesn't really matter so let's take this stuff yeah really doesn't really matter in this case and that's already the end of the merriman phase so we move into the hero phase again i get to draft some weapons and i guess we really have to get rid of some of those folks here so i will get a staff i will also get no let's go for two pink dice in order to rob a carriage maybe and huh, i get one more where should i go i think hmm. oh let's go for an axe the women cards and wow we see a lot of new guards smelter the smith and the church so one guy goes here not a problem the smith is here also not a problem and last but not least we send someone here to the church and there is a trap so this guy is removed i get it to my stash so i already have captured one of our guards here which is good but this trap is also removed too but it will still score me victory points at the end of the game so everything that's removed from my player board will definitely count so yeah let's place it next to our player board and last but not least the sheriff will go to the town center and again he will come with two guards one guard can be placed here the second guard goes to the guard track right now sounds awful but again i have a plan down here shouldn't be that big of a deal we still have to activate the roads we start with the south road so right now there isn't a carriage so we can skip to spawning a new one that's a brown one i think that's good we went for a brown carriage and then the north road gets activated and that's certainly bad news so this guy will move down here to the north gate we place it here first of all we will remove three coins from the north road so it's down to three i believe so i have to do something about it the problem is the next thing that will happen is a tax up search and we will now remove a coin from pretty much two roads because two of the carriage that have been robbed and we always start with the road that has the most coins next to it and of course that's the south road so one goes here so i think we are down to six but that could still score six more points at the end of the game and i think the next road in line is the west road here and then we will remove all of those carriages back into the bag and last but not least we have to spawn a new carriage up there in the north road i think this was the villain card over to our player actions now and i think this time i want to start with barbara florence her special ability allows her to pretty much give back to the poor for only one piece of gold so let's totally grab her place her here into the village and normally you would have to spend one uh, two coins per guard but because of her special ability she will only place two coins and this removes both of those guards back into the cup and this also gives us two points per guard removed that's pretty much one two three four more points in total awesome with her second move i think we want to fight some baddies up here uh, we need in order we need to free up this space i believe 
because there we get our weapons and we need weapons to send this to the envoy and whatnot. I think we need to at least get rid of And we need two more guards, by the way. So um, in order to fulfill our ransom tile. So I think overall, yeah, we totally have to do that. So let's start with this dude up here. So I think, can you see that? Uh, not quite. Let's zoom out a bit. So we will start with the ax. So this guy it is. And that's a success. Awesome. So this guard is removed. We have captured him. Perfect. So this die also goes back. We get one reputation. I will do that in a second. Uh, we only need one more guard and I think I don't want to take any chance. So this guy will be attacked next with those two. No. Oh, I wasn't thinking straight here, guys. I think I wasn't thinking straight. Yeah, I needed the orange dice here for stuff. Um, so maybe I will stop with her here now because I need those two orange dice in order to go after this carriage. And we have to go after this carriage because there are only three more coins. And next time this road activates, we really may come into a problematic situation. So I think, yeah. Let's stop with her. That's fine. That's totally fine. She captured one of those guards which means we get one more reputation. Next, I think we will go with Much the Miller's son here and he will go to the North Road for sure. He gets a reroll in the North Road, which is the reason why I wanted to have him available. And of course, he will try to rob this carriage here. So he will go here. He has to roll two orange dice. It's orange carriage. So we need one success and we have a reroll. So that's not a problem. This carriage is no more. So we place it here accordingly. We get two pieces of gold or two pennies and one resource. And I think I want some wood because I have a plan for that. This was his first move. And I guess next we want to get here in order to fight those guards. And I will only roll one die for now. So one dagger. That's good enough. Awesome. So this is another um, step on the reputation track. And I think let's also go for this guy with our remaining Dagger, also an success. Off, oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So two guards are down. And this also gives us one reward from the side because we have cleaned the side of all of the guards. So this is one more wood. So that's definitely perfect. Now we have four guards in total, which we can trade him at the end of the round. And of course, we also get one, two more reputations. So we're already in the next stage, though it's five per envoy, six per trap and seven per barricade. That's definitely nice. Okay, that was our last hero to activate. So we can ransom in our prisoners. And I think I will do that for now. So the, here are three for the first reward. And here is one more. I could keep on and uh, this would score me one point at the end of the game. But I think right now let's not do that. So that's 12 points. And for that we get two tools and one piece of wood, uh, which we really need in the next round, I guess. But of course, this gives us two 12 more points. So we had 35 victory points out of 130. You must be kidding me. Okay, let's reveal our next ransom tile. There's a whole pile of tiles. Okay, now we need two prisoners for seven points. I think this is definitely more relaxed the next round. Let's return all of our heroes, the villains. Of course, they will or he will not be available next round, which is kind of a pity. This guy will move down to the second level of the prison. So that's definitely something we have to keep in mind. So maybe we need to activate Robin Hood at the next round in order to free him. We can still move him down one last round, but then he would be hanged. And that's definitely not something we want to see with our merry men. For now, let's hold on to our card. So let's see what we get. Okay, here we have him. I really should have um, discarded him. I was thinking for a second, but here at least we have a resource card. This is what we needed. I think we already know her. I think she didn't really help us last round. And now we get this guy again, uh, but he also could give us one more loot when we steal from the ridge. And yeah, of course we can also use him to build a trap. 
that's always helpful. With that being said, we already move into the fourth round, but I think I will do rounds four and five as of my next and probably last video of this series. I really hope you are still enjoying my little playthrough of Robin Hood and the Merry Men here. Thanks so much for all your helpful comments and input in order to straighten things out for me. Really helps me a lot. Hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. Again, maybe episode three of this playthrough here. And yeah, until then, bye bye.